Hello, welcome. My name is Megan Muti. I'm the Director of Family Matters Parent Training and Information Center, and I'm here with our Educational Support Coach. Do you want to introduce yourself briefly? Hi, I'm Abby Mars. I'm an Educational Support Coach for Family Matters Parent Training and Information Center, and I am also the state's Educational Surrogate Parent Trainer. So today we're going to talk a bit about the Educational Surrogate Parent Program and give you an overview. But before we get started, I wanted to just let you know that Family Matters is one of two parent training and information centers in Illinois, and we're funded by the U.S. Department of Education to inform parents of their rights and responsibilities related to the education of children who need specialized instruction or accommodations at school. We are not a legal services agency, and we cannot provide legal advice or legal representation. And with that, we're going to talk to you about a program that we like to promote um, because we have a lot of participants and a lot of need across the state of Illinois, and that is the Educational Surrogate Parent Program. We are the grant holder through the Illinois State Board of Education, and Abby coordinates that program for us. So we wanted to get on briefly and tell you about the program and certainly utilize this to recruit some potential educational surrogate parents across the state. So with that, Abby, can you tell us a little bit about what an educational surrogate uh, parent is and why that program is needed? So sure, within the state of Illinois, we have over 900 children who are within the care of the state, meaning that they are um, in the custody of the Department of Children and Family Services. They might be in the custody or um, sub in, in the guardianship of a residential facility, a DJJ facility, um, a hospital setting. And so those those children have no um, parent or advocate or caregiver that can advocate for them. So some of those children, in fact, over 900 of them, qualify for special education services. So under IDEA, every child has the right to have a parent or an advocate present at, um, at a meeting to advocate for appropriate services for them to be part of the IEP team. So um, for our children who are within the care of the state, there is no person to fill that role. So through the educational surrogate program, um, we recruit volunteers to fill that role. Okay. So let's assume I learn about the program. I want to become an educational surrogate parent. Sure. Mm -hmm. Talk us through that process. Absolutely. So we have a form on our website um, that you can fill out, uh, you know, saying I have interest in becoming an NESP, or there is a way you can also on ISBE's website, fill out the same type of form. And that is sent to me. And after I receive that form, I contact you and I let you know a little bit about what it takes to be an educational surrogate parent. So uh, um, if you're interested in becoming one, you need to make sure that you understand that you at that point are in a position where it, it is within, you're responsible for advocating for appropriate educational services for a student. Um, that student has already had a rough start of things, so they need you to be dependable and committed to the program in the, in all, at, all, at all times. So you are required to pass a very, very thorough background check um, that I do through our office here at Family Matters. And you're also required to attend a six hour long training session to learn about how to advocate for students. And this is across the board required for everybody, whether you are a retired special education teacher, whether you are a special education attorney at one time, it doesn't matter. Everybody needs to learn the procedures, the safeguards, and learn the policies of being an educational surrogate parent. Okay. And let me clarify, if I become an educational surrogate parent, I go through the process. Am I a volunteer or an employee? You are a volunteer for the Illinois State Board of Education. Okay. So you're not a, an employee at any means, and you have no legal rights to that child except when their how their education is concerned. Okay. So um, you're not responsible for their health care. You're not responsible for, for feeding them or clothing them or going on field trips with that student. But you are required to have some knowledge of special education, which we will train you to do, okay. and um, understand your student. Understand more about your student's needs, their likes, their wants, their goals in life, so that you can advocate for them appropriately. Okay. And let's say I have a lot of interest in this program, but I cannot travel. Sure. to a student. Can yeah. I do everything virtually or? Absolutely. So you can not only train with us virtually, um, you can also attend their IEP meetings, um, observe your student in the classroom. You can do that through Zoom or Skype, lots of different things, have conversations with the staff or the um, teachers and the support staff caring for that student. You can do all of that virtually. So how after you've completely completed the program and your background check has um, been released and, and you're sent to the ISB program, then you're put into a database system called SIMS. And based on the preferences that you include on your application uh, is how you're paired with students. So um, let's say your application states you don't want to travel more than 30 miles outside of where you live at. If you're in a rural area that isn't really close to a facility that would house children like a group home or a 
um, a state run facility, something like that, then you may not be matched with children very quickly. So that's where a lot of people will say, I can serve children virtually as well. Okay, okay that's perfect. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. I, you know, we, there is such a demand. Mm -hmm. And so getting folks in there who have a strong interest in advocacy, but maybe can't make that drive. Sure. That's pretty typical. Mm -hmm. um, and we can support you in that. Yeah. Um, tell us a little bit about your in the educational circuit program. You become active. Mm -hmm. They have assigned students to you, um, but you want to keep learning. You sure. need support. What would that yeah. look like? So we are here for you. So as any other advocate for a child, whether that child lives within your home, is on your list for an educational surrogate parent, or it's just a, a family member that you're trying to learn more about special education, you have access to all the resources that Family Matters offers and FRCD offers, um, which is our partner agency in the northern end of the state that covers the Chicagoland area. So um, there's constant trainings that we offer to caregivers, guardians, and parents and self-advocates that you can take part of. There's newsletters that we release. There's podcasts like these that we release. But after you're a trained ESP, you also have access to our online portal just for ESPs. And in that online portal, we share a lot of continuing education resources. There's more things about conflict resolution or understanding EI benefits, lots of information that's stored on that portal. We know that it's a complex process. Mm -hmm. So our goal is to meet you where you're at and to continue to grow your knowledge base and make you feel comfortable. So Happy does an excellent job of ensuring ongoing continuing education and does it in a way that's creative so that you can access it and um, it can be useful to you in particular. So the other question that often gets asked is, is there any type of funding for educational surrogate parents or stipends? Sure, absolutely. So remember, you are a volunteer for the Illinois State Board of Education. You're not an employee, but you can be stipend or reimbursed $50 per student a year. So that's not like a $50 per meeting or $50 per observation or for record review. It's just one time per student per, per cycle. So um, you can submit that. They re, they send out stipend forms every six months. So you can send that in and um, and that's $50 that's paid directly to you for the students that you serve. So it's not much. You are volunteering your time, but ISB is trying to give you something back maybe for the expense of, um, you know, the drive time you had there with the gas and, and things like that. So that's helpful. Thank you. Is there any other piece of the ESP program that you get asked about a lot that you would like to cover? Um, so a lot of it is six hours is a really long time to devote for my training. And I get that completely. I'm on there for six hours with you the first Monday of every month. Um, but uh, we try our best to give you enough information so that you feel prepared that very first IEP meeting. But we absolutely, no one in the program expects you to be an expert after that six hour training. We're always here for you to call and say, hey, I have a new student. They're having behavioral issues. Can you help me find resources? Yes, that's what we're here for. We do not expect you to be an expert at the end of that training, but we do expect you to understand the policies, procedures, safeguards that go along with being an ESP by the time you're finished. Thank you. Yeah. If you're interested in becoming an ESP, as Abby said, on the Family Matters website, you can find a link that you can fill out to connect with Abby. Um, that will start the process. It is a lengthy process. Um, it, is, it does not happen overnight because of some of those background screenings that are required. Um, but getting the process going is not difficult. Um, and Abby will partner with you on that. And we certainly welcome your participation. We're in need of educational surrogate parents throughout the state. Um, and we like to have coverage for students anywhere that might have that need. Um, so we encourage you to reach out. If you just want to talk to Abby, you want to talk to me, you can yeah. give us a call and we can fill in gaps um, before you fill that form out, that's fine too. But we, we hope you'll join us. Um, thank you for taking the time to listen today. Thank you.